project will be presented by Antonio Moreira's project manager and development manager of LECBR Brazil. So thank you, Moreira's. Olá, eu sou Antônio Moreiras. I'm Antonio More Moreiras of NECBR. My Spanish is very uh, bad, and I prepared many notes to try to communicate uh, to, in a way that you can understand better. So you you can see me looking at my laptop all the time. I am. Uh, um, a project and development manager at NICBR, and one of the projects that I'm responsible of is uh, NTP.BR. We maintain a number of uh, services in NTP, uh, time service in internet that for free to all uh, providers of all uh, the uh, Tarama systems in the internet of the internet in Brazil. They are open servers. If you're not in Brazil, you can still use them, although we maintain them essentially to be used in Brazil. With the experience uh, of maintaining this service, I want to tell you today of synchronization of time in the internet uh, and specifically in NTP. This is a topic that uh, is quite striking. It is something that the technical people don't pay too much attention to. But I think that today there are reasons why we should uh, take a better look at them. Uh, at this in NTP, the time uh, in the, the internet time synchronization are increasingly related with uh, internet security. Recently, a new extension was created uh, to make uh, time synchronization uh, more secure in NTP. This extension is called NTS, Network Time Security. And essentially, I'm going to tell you about it here today. The first step is understanding why we use NTP. The clocks of computers in general and servers and uh, network uh, uh, machines are very bad. They are incapable of keeping synch uh, synchronization or the proper time unless you give them an out. Uh, 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 an assistant from outside. They may make mistakes, either advancing or uh, uh, being late several seconds a day, and that's very bad. It uh, it uh, uh, disrupts uh, the cryptographic uh, operations and the logs and the uh, operation of the apps that are time dependent. In order for computers and uh, the network devices, the software, cryptography, the internet protocols to uh, work properly, we need synchronized clocks and standardized clocks. It is in this context that we have the NTP uh, servers. NTP manages to synchronize the clocks of the network uh, 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 machines with an ex uh, against an, an, a global uh, standard. NTP is very light. It doesn't use uh, much computing resource, and it's easy to install and configure. And many machines today have it available by default. But you need to be careful, because not always is the default configuration the best one, the most adequate for, for our use. And NTP works with a hierarchical topology in uh, the client-server model, where typically a client can also operate as a server for other clients. It was designed like this to make it scalable to so that uh, the time of all the devices in the internet can be synchronized. However, as this 
is an extremely light uh, software and a protocol that is extremely light in practice. The possibility of having several hierarchical levels in this topology is not so useful. So, for instance, in Brazil, in the so-called NTP.br, in the servers that we make available in the internet, we make available the basis of this hierarchic topology, that is, servers connected directly to the source of time that we call Stratus 1. There are other op operative nodes for uh, NTP. For instance, it can uh, operate in multicast or symmetric mode where there are no servers or clients, but the devices are sort of peers. At the same hierarchical level, you can synchronize the other. In practice, we recommend not to use these other modes. So only the client-server mode. One of the reasons for this is that the new security extension in NTS only works in client-server mode. In practice, you don't you need not to worry if the server that you are synchronizing with is Stratus one or two or three where it is in the hierarchy. It doesn't make much of a difference uh, in, in the quality of synchronization and the quality of time. Likewise, it is important to consider that the specification in NTP not it does not just uh, uh, define a protocol in the st strictest sense as how the packets are formed or how they are exchanged, but it also specifies a, an algorithm, how the software should operate in the computer or the device, how to handle the information of the different servers, of the different clocks, of the different references of time to then synchronize the local clock. And the algorithm even specifies how the synchronization should take of the local uh, clock take place. So in spite of being very simple in the, the usage, and in spite of having a very light uh, software, NTP is a very sophisticated, complex, and efficient system. NTP obtains information from the clock of multiple servers. Uh, it obtains a time reference from multiple servers, certainly. This is an important issue in the configuration of NTP. It is important to have several time references, external time references, at least three and more if possible. Uh, the uh, different uh, um, information that NTP of the time that NTP obtains of the different references and um, it obtains different references and it can discover which of those references have the right uh, clock and which do not. And it can also find out which of those references among the correct references is the best and has the most precise information and can choose some secondary references to complement that information. From based on that choice of the best reference, NTP knows how to adjust the local clock. Therefore, discipli it dis disciplines the clock. Not only does it go and uh, move uh, the uh, uh, god, but it changes the frequency of uh, uh, and to tell the clock whether to go faster or more slowly in the computer or the network device. This is quite interesting because it's a, a close loop process. NTP learns from the local clock and corrects it even losing time references in the future. So if you lose network um, um, connectivity, still the local clock will uh, work uh, correctly, or at least better than if it just worked on its own. NTP 
also guarantees time monotony. That is, time always moves forward. NTP won't let the clock to adjust backwards. Never. It will never go too slow. Um, it will never go backwards to adjusting time. And NTP can also use cryptography to enhance the general uh, reliability of the system so that the client may know that uh, the correct reference is being used uh, so that the client may be absolutely sure that the reference that was configured there is being used. When we speak of security, we tend to think of the properties, confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity of information. In the case of uh, the clock information, the time information, confidentiality is not considered an issue. The time is standardized. The time information is the same for everyone and it is public. Therefore, there's no need to cipher the time information that is transmitted through the network like in NTP. The algorithms that I presented in the previous slides guarantee the integrity of the information in a very satisfactory way if NTP has been properly identified. Ciphering of uh, encoding of NTP primarily serves uh, to guarantee the authenticity of the information. This that NTS brings to NTP. So NTS and other ways of cryptography that were already used in NTP try to guarantee that the server that I am consulting is the same. I want to be sure that I'm looking for the time information in a reference that I trust and that nobody is pretending to be. And NTS is not the best uh, encrypting way that was included in NTP. It's been a long time since we saw the version 3 of NTP that where you have the possibility to use symmetric keys. The same key, the same uh, cryptographic uh, key in the server and the client. This method works and even in the newest uh, uh, versions of NTP, and it can still be used. Only that with a symmetric key, there is no automatic way to generate or to uh, store or to transmit this key in a safe way. This must be done through some external method. But if you do it, you can use it, and it's very good. With NTP v4, they created a protocol called auto key to generate the keys automatically. And it was an absolute disaster. It has intrinsic problems design problems, the way it was designed that make it insecure. It's complicated. It doesn't work with NATs. So under no circumstances should you use it. You should not use Autokey. It is considered uh, bad. Now, more recently, we have an NT, the network time security. That is what I'm going to discuss in the next slides. Now, in the past, security was not a concern when this was about synchronizing the time. But many things have changed over the past years. Internet grew, internet became more decentralized, and there is 
a lot of evidence of insecurity related to NTP with the software. There is also a growing interdependence between the correct time and the correct measurement of time and security. For example, there is a need of storing records and logs of applications that have correct time stamps. Today, in many places, there are legal requirements that have to be complied with for the purpose of storing these records. This includes correct time information. So NTS, Network Time Security, NTS is the new security extension for NTP. The development began in 2015 and was standardized in 2020 in RFC 89115. Now what is NTS? NTS is a mechanism that uses TLS to provide cryptography for NTP in the client-server mode. TLS is the same protocol, the same security protocol used in the web. So as NTS, NTS will use the same type of certificates that we use for the websites, the ones that use HTTPS. NTS is divided into two components. The first component is called NTSKE. This is used to establish the security keys. The second components are extensions of the NTP version 4 protocols that allow using this cryptography for the packets. So as I mentioned earlier, the purpose is not to do uh, cryptography of the information. The purpose is to sign this time information cryptographically in order to be sure that it comes from the correct server. NTS has a whole series of interesting features. It can provide the identity for a given server, for a given time reference. It can authenticate the client in a server so that the client is sure who the server is. It provides protection against repetition attacks so the client can attack can detect attacks such as these. NTS provides the client with the opportunity of identifying that a reply is a reply to a re specific query. NTS does not affect the privacy of the NTP system. It doesn't disclose any information that might enable identifying a client when they do queries from different networks. NTS is designed in such a way that it doesn't work as a protocol to be exploited for amplification purposes. The replies are never higher than the queries. NTS is scalable because it has been designed in such a way that the server is stateless. And finally, NTS does not degrade the clock synchronization quality of NTP. In the NTS operations, first of all, the client connects to a NTS KE server in order to exchange cryptographic parameters. This is done in the TCP port 4460. So the NTP then sends cryptographic information with the NTP server. Now, once this phase is 
have completed the client's task to speak with the NTP server through the normal port, which is port UDP123. The cryptographic parameters that are exchanged between server and client in the extension fields of NTS enable authentication of the packets. So you can see that NTS KE server and the NTP server in practice can be the same software. This can be this can be the same software. So in fact, the softwares I will be explaining are implemented in this way, NTS KE and NTP server. This is just one software, but conceptually they are separate. This slide contains the same information, but with some further details. So this slide also contains the same information regarding packet exchange, NTP packet exchange, with further details if you wish to consult this. Today we have two softwares that we can use for NTS. One of these softwares is NTP-SEC. This software is a fork of the reference implementation of NTP that was done in 2015. An important section of the code was dealt with to seek reinforce security and a modernization of the code. Today, NTP-SEC is actively maintained by an experienced team that has responded adequately to all the security incidents that, might ar that arose. This is a mature software that can be used in production. And the second option is Crony. Crony is a more modern implementation of NTP, and it also provides excellent quality with adequate maintenance and with production quality, and it is compatible with NTS. Don't use the reference implementation of NTP. In other words, the most classical version of the software, because this is a very old implementation with many code lines addressed at platforms that no longer exist. There have been many security incidents and many breaches over the past years. The response of the team that maintains this hasn't always been the best one. And today, there are much better options. The two options that I mentioned in the previous slide, for example, NTP-SEC or Crony. For network teams for Windows and for NAC, we might not have support for NTS in the short term. As far as I'm aware, we don't have support. For cases such as these, what I recommend is to use the native client of the platform. And an interesting option is to have a Linux server in your structure working as an NTP server. This Linux server would be an NTS client for external references. In other words, it synchronizes with the internet in a reliable way using NTS and can also provide a time reference within your network, which is more restricted, more reliable, and more secure, and only NTP only for those devices that aren't yet compatible with NTS. So in terms of the topology, you have a client that admits NTS, for example, a Linux host. This can be used directly with NTS references. If your clients don't support NTS, 
it would be interesting to have a server in your network that uses NTP and NTS for synchronization purposes externally and then uses NTP or NTP plus NTS to synchronize your internal clients. The next slides in my presentation show the configuration of NTS using Crony and NTPSEC, both in the role of the client and in the role of the server. The adjustments are very simple, and the slides speak for themselves. I will show these very briefly, and you will have the presentation for reference purposes. So this slide here shows NTPSEC with a client. We just have to enter the NTS directive so that it works with the client and install NTPSEC and then start. Well, Crony, the same thing happens here. We just have to enter the guidelines for the servers and NTS at the end, and then it's ready on the client side. If you wish to create an NTP server for your network, this is slightly more difficult. So in this case, we have to create a certificate and like the web certificates, you can use SearchBot or Let's Encrypt. So you create a certificate and you have to pay attention to the firewall because it is not only the NTP 123, you also have the portal TCP 4 four six zero so if you use search port you need to open the tcp 80 port so it creates a certificate this is an example of the configuration of the server in ntpsec in the case of crony it is quite similar you have to create the certificates you have to configure the firewall, and then you configure the server. So the slides are available in LACNIC 39's website. So you can view the different configuration examples. So thank you very much for your attention. And this is my contact information and will be available at the event throughout the rest of the week in case you have any questions. Thank you very much. So a big round of applause for Antonio Moreiras. Thank you very much for your presentation. We have two minutes left for questions from the participants. Well, I have a question. Maybe some people here might not understand the real need of having an NTP basically for security issues and also regarding the update of some single use passwords. Could you give us, tell us in one minute to explain why it is important to implement NTP in your networks and also why to use NTS together? Well, I will try. I think that the main issue here are the logs. If you don't have the correct log and you have a security incident or some other type of incident and you have to consult logs in different devices and in different servers, and if these logs have a time that is not compatible from one device to the other. So it's going to be quite a mess. You won't be able to understand anything and won't understand why this occurred. So it is necessary to have a standard for the clocks of all your devices. And today, 
we have the legal responsibility, the liability. In Brazil, there is a civil framework that requests providers to store some specific logs and to deliver this to the to keep these records and hand these over to law enforcement and if the timestamps are not correct you have problems you can report a user that might not have anything to do with what occurred so this is something that is quite simple this is something that has to be done so that would be the answer thank you thank you, thank you for your responses round of applause for Moreira and uh, the presentation will be available you can download it from uh, LACNIC uh, now we invite Carlos Andres Lozano